Well, my first guitar was an acoustic, and I played for about maybe four months or so, and my parents saw that I was very serious about it, and so it wasn't hard to um, persuade them to get me an electric, because I was listening to a lot of rock music. So this was when I was 11 years old, and I had played piano before that. And at that point, there was no piano in the house and I didn't play at all. So when I started playing guitar, that was my only instrument. And I absolutely loved it. I just loved the guitar so much. But then I started missing the possibilities of the piano. And that was after a few years. So that's why I started experimenting with the two-hand technique on guitar. We had a piano in the house when I was very young. So my sister was a couple of years older than me. And I do remember that she was taking piano lessons and she would um, leave the piano and I'd get up there and try to do some of the things that she did and just experiment. You know, um, so I remember when I was five, I wrote my first composition at the piano. And when I was seven, I started taking lessons. Yeah. So when I first started playing guitar, I really loved B.B. King. And he was really my first guitar hero. Because I remember the thrill is gone. Even before I started playing guitar, the thrill is gone. It was a song that was out there. And, um, just his notes, just the sound of his notes were just so sweet. And I wanted to make that sound. But I didn't actually try to emulate him. Um, because when I got my first guitar, I was already focused more on Jimi Hendrix. And so Jimi was actually the first guitarist that I really tried to learn from and emulate when I was younger. And then I discovered so many other great players. I mean, I would say um, George Benson was another guitarist who I loved and was really influential. John McLaughlin, I remember exactly where I was when I first heard John McLaughlin. <laughs> It was a life-changing moment. And man, I could mention so many others. Once we start down this road, I'm gonna talk about a lot of guitar players. So maybe we should just for now just leave it, leave it there. solid body electric guitar and it was a good guitar to, to begin with you know it wasn't a really super high quality guitar um, but it had a nice sound and the nice thing too was that when I got a higher quality guitar I still had my Contessa and so I was able to experiment I did a lot of experiments it became a science project researching vibrations of strings and sound and the mathematics of ratios of string length and how it corresponds to frequency and things like that. And then I also went back to my original acoustic guitar at that point and started experimenting with that as well. I put a like an alternate fingerboard just made of, of, of plastic so that I could change the locations where you put your fingers because I didn't have frets anymore. It was like a fretless fingerboard. And I could put markers on that fretless fingerboard. And so I experimented, experimented with dividing the octave into equally tempered scales. So the conventional scale that everyone uses with a normal guitar is 12. So we have 12 evenly spaced pitches per octave. So right next to 12, I had 11, and 10, and 9, and 8, and, all, and so forth. So I was, I was 
just probably equally a scientist and musician in those days. <laughs> My musical style really has a lot of variety, so it's not like there's one style. I have a certain sound, like when I'm playing the touch technique on guitar, that technique has a certain sound. And I think that I have a certain sensibility, like the way that I approach melodies and harmonies. But I really like different styles of music. I think when, when I grew up, there were a lot of influences available to me. You know, and now, today, it's even more. You know, but at that time, that was the beginning of when a young person had access to so much information. And I really took advantage of it. When I grew up and became a professional musician, I loved a lot of different kinds of music. But the professional world wasn't really geared for that. The professional world was geared for people who specialized in a certain style. And that was not me. I mean, I would say jazz is my favorite, but I like rock, I like blues, I like avant-garde classical, electronic, I like R&B, funk. So it's difficult to put my style in a box because I have an open mind. And I think that the people who's, who are my core audience, who come back and I see them again and again at my concerts, or they'll buy this album and then there's another album that's really different and they'll buy that one too. But my, my really core audience, I think what they really like is the fact that my mind is open and my heart is open because they're the same way. We're like this community of people who just love all kinds of music. So normally with a guitar, you need two hands to play a note. Your left hand selects what the note will be and your right hand gives the energy by plucking or strumming. So with the touch technique, you're hitting the string against the fret, that's the metal bar. And so the impact of the string hitting the fret gives you both of those factors. It selects the note and it energizes the note at the same time. So by doing that, you can play guitar with just one hand. And so you can use one hand to play one part or use the other hand to play another part. And it's also possible to play more than one musical line with one hand. So it really opens up what we call the textural possibilities of the guitar, the sort of the sort of the, the raw material of the musical sound. It opens up more possibilities for that. For years, for years and years, and I talked about B.B. King, my first guitar hero. For years and years, I was talking with B.B. about doing something, you know, and I was asking him, can you play on my album? And he wanted to do it, but we had to find the right song. And we finally found the right song. The right song was Riders on the Storm by The Doors. We were going to do that. We were going to do that song. And... Um, but then um, B.B. passed away, and, and so um, I decided, well, I'm still going to do the song. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play his part. So I'm going to make the song like a tribute to my first guitar hero. And so when you hear the song, it's like I'm channeling the inspiration. Of course, it doesn't sound exactly like B.B. King. It's me playing but I'm channeling the inspiration of my first guitar hero, and I created a dialogue. And like, yeah, it would have been wonderful. My goal was to actually have him on the record. But what I did was, was that, because that was what was possible. And this is what we do in life. You know, we, we experience loss, we experience change, and we work with that. And, and we do what we, what we can do. So that's kind of what the album is, is all about. So I've had this guitar since, um, I think around 87. 
And this is the uh, Vijay Arpege model. And I remember one time I was in Paris and I did an interview with a music magazine. And the journalist brought a couple of guitars by BJ just because he wanted to know my opinion. And so he brought them to the hotel for the interview. And I tried them out. And one of the things I really loved is that I could apply my touch technique right away. It was like just instant. Because normally I would have to make an adjustment. And a lot of guitars are not accurate enough to get the setup right. But with these guitars, it was just like effortless. And also, with the touch technique, the sound is quieter. So you need the sound to really project. And so with the amount of sustain and, and just the, the, the level, the pickups are, are, are really powerful. And it's like listening real close and hearing the sensitive nuances of the string and just boom, just picks it up, you know? So it makes it easy. I don't really know his, his background. I mean, I know that he's a luthier, but I get the sense that um, he's got something, some other background that he brings to it. It's like, um, it's like there's things about the instrument that seem like they came from like a machinist, or someone who does precision machinery. Like, like um, some of the, w the ways that some of these details work, like the string locks and the low friction um, vibrato arm and stuff. Um, it's unconventional. And sometimes people will look at it and they'll, they'll like do a double take. They'll look, they look again like, what? How does that work? And it's, it's different. So he's just an out of the box thinker. He just thinks differently, you know? And so I think that is um, good for me because I'm the same way. I don't do things the normal way. So this guitar had the right innovations that made it really easy for me to by my sound. So this is a little headphone amplifier and it's hooked up to this little um, the pill, the Beats pill speaker. And I mean, it's a surprisingly good sound, you know. Thank you.